So good morning again. Good to see you here. All right, so what I'm talking about today is playing with money. And I love the subject of money. Everybody else love the subject of money? Huh. Yeah, we love money. But we ask the question, why is playing with money important? Think about that for a minute. Why do we want to play with our money? Because playing with money helps each one of us to discover our hidden beliefs about money. Playing helps us discover how we each define money and what we define money as. Yes? yes. Yeah. Discovering money's value or our fears that we have placed on money. Anybody have fears about money? Anybody get scared about money? Oh, I did too. Yeah, so this is just the right talk for you. Because we place fears and doubts and questions on money. And, and when that comes up, we know then what needs to be healed. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, says, it's important that we don't hide our beliefs or our fears as we allow these old beliefs to come to our attention. We open to the greater good and we open to the possibility of healing those old beliefs. I noticed over the years that many people, including myself, have old beliefs holding holding us back around money, around wealth, keeping us from expanding financially or finding peace with money. Well, let's everybody breathe. I guarantee you that there is something that's going to heal for you today, okay? Okay. Good. Years ago, I had a student who held down three jobs, and she seemed to have, she never seemed to have enough money. And so she came into my class that I was teaching, always feeling limited financially. She got paid three different times in the month, always believing that there wasn't enough. She was struggling. She was struggling a lot with her money, and that's why she came into the class I was teaching. So I gave her an assignment. And the assignment that I gave her was to cash all of her checks and to take the money home and throw it on the bed and roll in it and play with it. And then to take it and put it in her washing machine because you know money's paper. Put it in the washing machine and wash it and then stick it on the wall and see how long it takes for it to dry and fall to the floor. <laughs> And so that's what she did. And to keep saying over and over again, money, 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 I love my money, as she rolled in the money, as she washed her money, and she watched her fall off the walls after it dried. Mm -hmm. Write that one down, money, 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 my money, I love my money. After a month, she realized that she had tunnel vision. All she saw was the little, the small amount she made every, every paycheck, three times a month. She had never looked at the total amount coming in because it scared her. Her tunnel vision limited her truth about her money. Making friends with what you do have is the first moment that the healing starts to happen. This is what I have, and I'm willing to bless it. Thank you, God, for this amount that I have. That has great value because it gives thanks for whatever it is we have. It helps us to open the door for the possibility of more. One year later, the same student came back to me who felt limited. 
and she had increased her money wonderfully. She had received raises and a big raise in her belief system about money. And she's doing very well today. Because you see, she's changed her mind about what money was to her. I love money. Money loves me. As, we, as you believe, so shall it be. It's our beliefs that set the tone for how life serves us or doesn't seem to serve us. Change your beliefs, change your life. This is what we believe here. We believe that there is a power for good and we each can use it and it is there for us to call upon and say thank you. This is true. I have this truth taking place in my life all the time. It wasn't in the beginning when I joined Science of Mind, when I joined this philosophy that says I am blessed and I am a blessing. No matter who I am, no matter where I've been, no matter what my history is. The topic of money often has a great emotional charge. Anybody charged emotionally about money? I was. I'll never forget. When I divorced my husband with two young children, I realized that if I was safer and better off alone taking care of my children. I had less money, but I had freedom. And that was more important to me. The emotional charge that lies hidden within us, waiting for each one of us to be discovered. Our discovery leads to our financial freedom. So we want to open the door. What do I believe about money? allowing greater circulation in the form of money to be welcomed into our lives. See, our key to this freedom is learning to love money. Can we all say that? Money, money, I love money. Money, money, I love money. No matter what you have or what you don't have, do you see? So we want to be grateful for all that we do have. Not in fear-based hoarding, or in, or making any kind of challenging a way of life. Prosperity means we are each willing to look at our beliefs, we're each willing to look at our stories that we tell about money. We all have a story about money. When we're willing to look at what might be hampering our flow of prosperity, it helps us to open to a greater good, okay? Yeah? So let's take a moment and ask ourselves the question, money is, just let that answer come to you. What comes to your mind? What's your first thought? Money is, doesn't matter what comes up for you, that's what you want to know. Listen to what comes up. So let's take a look at that. Money is. All right, we've seen this before, but we're gonna look at it again. Money is, so we're just gonna keep writing it. Money is. We're gonna keep asking ourselves, money. Oh, that's an M. Ah, money is. Money is. Money, let it pop up, okay? Yes? Money is. All right, anybody have anything that first came up? Money is, yes? A problem. Problem, good. All right, who else? Scarce. Scarce? Scarce, is that this spot? Something like that, no? Yes. Freedom. Freedom. Susan. Beautiful. Beautiful. I want to hear what comes up that's negative. Oh. <laughs> dirty. What? Is bad. Bad. Somebody said dirty? 
Yeah? Very easy. Anything else? Greed. What? Greed. Greed. That's a good one, isn't it? Okay. Scarce. Um, okay, anything else? Money is uh, limited. How about limited? The root of all evil. What? The root of all evil. Okay, money is evil. Good. All right. Notice what this is saying. I hope you can see this on Facebook. Money is a problem. Money is scarce. Money is freedom. That's true. Money is beautiful. But I want us, when we do this exercise, I want us to allow that negativity that hides deep within us to come forward. Do you understand that? This exercise, the more we do it, the more we discover what's the basis, what's the foundation of what I believe about money. Yeah, we all think, oh yes, that's freedom and it's beautiful. But do we know that all the time? Do we look at our bank account and say, oh, it's beautiful? Okay? So, all right, money is, uh, what, is it? what was that one? Bad. Bad, thank you. I love my writing. Bad, bad money, bad money, shit. Money is dirty, greed, evil, limited, okay? So this is how you do it. So now we want to put across a problem Okay, what's the opposite of problem? Solution. Solution, good. I like also using the thesaurus to find the opposite word for whatever. Okay, scarce. Abundant. Or plenty? Plenty. plenty. Okay, well we've already got freedom and beautiful. Okay, bad. It's good. Wonderful. Good. What was the other word? Wonderful. Wonderful. Dirty. Clean because we washed it, didn't we? <laughs> Have you ever washed money? Have you guys ever washed money? I mean, really done it on purpose? I'm going to invite you to go to the bank, see, because that's what I tell my students. I take cash or check. Go to the bank, get fives, tens, ones, and then bring them home and play with them. You take that money back to the bank in the morning. They're not going to say, oh, honey, you just got this. You have to hold on to it. They'll take it back. So that's how you learn to play with your money, so that you can see what it is you are receiving, so then you know how to ask and know for more. Yes? Yeah? Okay, good. All right. Uh, was that greed? Was yes. that greed? Yeah, I did T instead of T. Okay, greed. Uh, what would be an opposite word of greed? Generous. Yes. What? Generous. Generous. Evil. Opposite. Good. good. What do you have? Do we have good? Yeah, we already have good. Even another word for evil. God. What? God. Okay. Well, it certainly is. God. Opposite of evil. Limited. Unlimited. Unlimited. Okay. So now what you have crossed off is what you want to let go of, yes? So we want to go and say, okay, I'm willing to let go of my problem, my scarcity, my uh, belief that it's bad, that it's dirty, that it, anybody who wants money is greedy, or that's greedful, limited, evil, okay? So now you, could, now you know exactly how to, to do your affirmation. Money is God in action. Money is the solution to every event and circumstance in my life because I am open and receptive to plenty. Money is my freedom. Money is beautiful. Money is good. I know and accept that the wonderful expression of money is desiring to take place in my life on this day. And my money is so clean and it is 
generous. My money flows to me effortlessly and easily because my money is God in action and it is unlimited and so it is all men. Got it? Yes. That's how we do it. Over and over and over again. We want to take what it is we believe, do the line through it, telling our brain, oh, stop that. Telling our brain, this no longer belongs to me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because it's taking action. And then when this does come up, when I think, oh, I have a problem with money. No, no, money, money is God in action. Money is here for me. Money serves me. And I serve money. Okay? So we want to make friends with our money. So playing with money has great value for us because then we take the stigma out of it. Money is simply a tool, you guys. It's a tool that helps us to circulate energy. As we free ourselves from the old beliefs, the emotional conflicts that we have around money, we begin to experience healthier relationships not only with ourselves, but with our finances, with money. We're all wanting healthy relationships. And one of the biggest relationships we all have is with money. Money flows in and we keep some. And we release some with ease because we have responsibilities. And so we spend our money out there paying our bills and it returns to us multiplied. Money is always in circulation. It goes out, it comes back, goes out and it comes back. Money is an effect. It responds to what we believe. Because money is God in action. Just as our health responds to our beliefs, as does all of life. Life responds to what we believe, what we say is life is. Like it or not, our beliefs are powerful. What we believe and what we say about events and circumstances and money in our life is what we create. We are creators. Reverend Marshall Sutton and, and Lloyd Strong wrote a class a workbook that call, is called Financial Freedom. And they say, hooray for money. Because it is money that draws us in, into relationships. You see, if we didn't have that exchange of money, we wouldn't be, we would just be forging for ourselves. We wouldn't be in stores, we wouldn't be in shops. Money draws us into relationships where healings need to occur. Anybody been into a relationship and stayed in the relationship because of money? I did. And then I said, that wasn't worth it. It is money that takes us into places where we need to learn to love. Money takes us into places and experiences where we need to learn to love. And I was fortunate enough to spend a whole week with Reverend Marsha and Reverend Lloyd learning all about financial freedom and how to teach it. And then I brought it back to Santa Rosa where I was teaching financial freedom in Santa Rosa. With my last name being Buck, I had this one man who was an announcer and he would announce the events and he would say, okay, Maggie, big bucks is going to teach financial freedom. So everybody started knowing me as Maggie Big Bucks. Mm -hmm. Now I have to tell you that that title gave me credibility in all that I taught, but also my money just started to flow because everybody in that community, and that community was about, is about six, 700 large, saw me as Maggie Big Bucks. Consciousness creates when we say whatever it is about somebody, that's why we want to speak well of them. It also helped me to flow money in every avenue of my life. 
You see? Thoughts become things. Consciousness shifts all of us. And if we're wanting something to change in our life, then we have to change our thinking. That's what we believe here. We change our thinking, we change our life. The consciousness of being maybe big bucks helped me to up-level my financial prosperity and my well-being. And I really learned to love money. In not a way, we don't want to love money in a greedy sense or a sense of, of hoarding, but we want to love it as an avenue for our well-being, as an expression of healing and wholeness. What we think and what we believe determines what we will attract. Marsha and Lloyd also said, the way we manage anything is the way we manage everything. Therefore, the way we manage our money tends to be the way we manage our life. And I really saw that early on in my life. I wasn't managing it that well, and my life needed some correction. We make the corrections. And we change the direction we're going in. For each of us to truly understand this great value that's taking place in each one of our lives, and our experiences, developing a more joyous expression for each of us to live full out. How can we best manage our finances and our lives? It helps if we will start with recognizing that God is our source. God is our source in everything. That's what we hear when we do joys and support, that the good that's coming to each and every one of our lives. Number two, to accept and embrace money as a spiritual idea, a symbol of expanding substance and supply. We receive and we purchase. We receive and we purchase. And we give thanks daily. Giving thanks daily for everything that we have in our lives and everything that we wish to have is vitally important. Number four, realize divine supply is unlimited. The supply God has for you, the love God has for you, is unlimited. Give thanks in advance for your future prosperity. Remember, our money says it all. What does our money say? In God we trust. So when we see that, we, want, we are entrusted in that presence of God in our money. So we want to take that into prayer. I have more to say about money. I'm going to say more next week. So be sure and be here. Okay, let's take it into prayer. Ah, so just knowing and accepting that there's only one power, one all-loving, all-nurturing presence by whatever name. I call this God, the infinite, the divine, the beloved, the spirit of life that lives in and through and as each and every one of us. For we are filled to overflowing with the goodness and the grace that God is in and through and as each one of us. I know and accept as we move about this day, we move so with a greater opening of information, a greater acceptance of all the money that does come to us and that that is yet to be received by us. Knowing and accepting that it is just a channel for a raise in consciousness of real reality that we are each blessed and a blessing, no matter how much or how little we have we give thanks in advance for all of that good that we have, all of that we are graced with and by, in the fullness and richness of pure spirit. I know and accept that this love that is permeating all our whole being and every event and circumstance in our lives is that that lifts us up beyond conditions and situations. And so with a grateful heart, we give thanks for this time, for this knowingness, that with God all things are possible. So we open the door knowing and accepting that money is good working in each and every one of our lives in a greater way. And where there is a need for a healing, we call forth that miracle working power of pure spirit to awaken within us and within the loved ones, in our family members, in our friends. So we just release this, our powerful word, into the ever-living, loving law of God 
that always says yes, returning to and through each and every one of us, multiplied, magnified, spilling over. We are filled to overflowing with the goodness and the grace of God. And we allow it, we give thanks for it, we let it be so. And if you're in agreement, please join me in saying, and so it is, amen. <laughs>